So we can shoot our bullets, except the bullets don't move and they spawn in literally every frame as long as we hold down the shooting button, which both of those aren't exactly ideal. So let's fix both of those real quick in today's video. The majority here is going to be about setting a timer to make sure it only lets you shoot every 0.2 seconds or so. But before we do that, uh, let's actually go real quick into our bullet class and add another component to that. That's going to be a U property, and that will be a class named U projectile movement component, which is a very big name. So I'm just copying it over from the documentation. And let's call that a uh, projectile movement. And of course, that needs to be a pointer, something that's so easy to just forget. And we can add that in here. So we'll just, uh, as we're used to, create default sub object of the type, which again, I'm just going to copy paste that because that word is way too long with way too many chances to make a typo. <laughs> we also need to use its include. And then we can also set up some of the defaults in here as well. We can always change this in engine if we want to, but we want to, for instance, uh, disable the gravity scale, so our projectile gravity scale will simply be set to zero, so that it doesn't fall through the floor. And in theory, that should be all we need to set, because you can also worry about setting its direction and its speed values through code like here. Um, we're going to worry about that a little bit later. But let's make a U property here real quick uh, for the speed and set that to public, because we might need to use that from another class. Now, let's get into the whole timer business, because as it is in our player controller over here, we have a input action that is bound, set to event triggered, uh, to fire bullets whenever we do this input action, which is set to a certain key. The issue is that it now spawns in a bullet every frame, as we could see at the start of the video, and we don't really want that. We want to have a way to see, have we fired in the last X amount of time. And if we have, we don't want to shoot a bullet. So let's go into our player controller's header here, and we can in the protected or hell, even in the private section if we wanted to, um, simply make a bool uh, called can fire. And we want to make sure by default that is set to true. So it can always fire unless we tell it, hey, stop firing. If we go back to our shoot bullets here, our fire bullet. We first check if the player character is a valid pointer, if it's not a null pointer. In that same if statement, we're going to put two and percent signs to check for two different conditions. The other one is can fire, the bool we just made. So this has to be true in order for the shoot bullet function to be able to run. Now, after we run that shoot bullet function, we set can fire to being false. So now after we fire once, we'll never be able to fire again. And that is because when there's a set of false, this if statement no longer fully holds true, and this code will never run again. So we need to put something in place to set that bool back to being true after a certain amount of time. And that is where timers come in. So timers, we need to make a separate function that we can tell the engine to run after a certain amount of time. You can't just say, uh, wait five seconds and then do some more code. You can only say, hey, in a certain amount of time, run this different function. It's not like uh, what you have in Python where you can say, I, th I think it's called sleep, just sleep X amount of seconds and then move on with the rest of the code. You can't really do that, which is too bad because that would be fantastic. So let's also create a float here and realistically, this would be a float that you want to have on the weapon, not on the player controller. But for now, let's keep it simple and say a uh, time between fires. And we will make that a U property that we can add anywhere so that we can easily try and play around with how much time that takes. Uh, by default, let's set that to 0.2F. The F, uh, so the code knows that we're talking about a float here. Making a timer. Well, we do have a little macro. If you have the plugin that I taught you to download at the start of the series, which is uTimer set, and that just puts in the code that you would otherwise have to manually write. So what you need to do is you need to get world, just like we needed to do for uh, spawning in an actor. 
And then from that, you can get the time manager, which is an object that's all about the time that goes on in your world. That has a function called a set timer that takes in a timer handle, which we'll need to make in a moment. A object, which is just going to be this. That is the object that you are going to run a function on in a certain amount of time. The address of that function, the delay time. So for us, that's going to be that variable that we just made and whether or not this should loop. So maybe you want a timer that does something every five seconds from the moment it's first fired. In that case, this would be true. Uh, by default, this is false. So you can just leave it off, I believe, and it will just be false by default. So let's make our way back. We need a class here. Well, that's the class that we're on right now. So that's easy. And we need a function. Well, let's make that function and uh, call that void reset can fire. And this function is really going to be easy uh, because it's literally just setting can fire to being true again. That way, whenever we get back to this again, this if statement is now completed and we can shoot the bullet again, set it to false and run this timer again, after which we set it to true and the whole thing can run over and over and over again. So we'll put in reset can fire for the function here. This is just this. Pretty much always going to be just this, the object that you need to put in because you're running a function on this object. Then we need to put in a timer handle and that is a variable type called f timer handle and we'll just call that timer handle because I think that is by default the name that macro uses. A timer handle is kind of like a manager that just keeps track of, hey, am I running a timer at the moment? Because it could very well be the case that you make this as a variable on your header file as a member, at which point uh, these timer handles can only run one timer at a time. And sometimes maybe when a timer is already running, you don't want to allow it to run the timer again to restart the timer until it's finished running. Or maybe you do want to reset a timer or so on and so forth. In that case, you would uh, declare that in your header file so you always have access to it and it always survives. Uh, this way you can just set it and forget it. You just create the timer handle, pass it in here and after that it gets destroyed anyway. And honestly, most of the time you do do it this way. Uh, so the whole timer handle situation, not too relevant, just you do need to do it, is, is the thing. Well, that's all fine and dandy, but what if instead we want to do something on a timer for which we need a parameter? Because this can only call normal functions without any parameters in them. And that's why we have set fire directly set to true, but that's a little bit messy. Because what if on this same class we also have a function for set fire? that we do based on a parameter, because it's very likely that a class like this would have something like that. So let's just change this function to uh, set can fire, which takes in a bool parameter for the value. And then this will also take in the bool parameter, of course, and we'll change the name here. And this will start screaming at us because this function no longer exists. But that's okay, because we actually are going to get rid of this in a second because you can set timers for functions with parameters it just takes one little extra line of code and that is we're going to make an f timer delegate instead and we'll call that uh delegate and that we will set equal to f timer delegate double colon we're going to be using a static function for this uh create u object and in this we're going to take these two parameters and put them into this delegate instead. And of course, we need to use the proper name for the function here. And this will now allow us to put in the parameters for this function into this delegate. So this function takes one bool parameter. In this case, that's going to be a value of true. And now suddenly we have an object here that we can pass in instead that will run this with the value that we just put in. Uh, if you're using this one for whatever reason, uh, you do need to specifically say that looping is true or false. You can leave it off in the other scenario. In this scenario, you can't. That seems just like an oversight to me, uh, but do be aware of that. And now we can use this function elsewhere. And we can even 
if we wanted to, make another system where it gets set to false after 0.1 seconds and then back to true after 0.2 seconds in total. Uh, because we now have a much more flexible function that we can call on a timer with a parameter. So really, that is all there is to it as far as these timers go. So let's compile the whole thing here. And now we should see that we're only spawning these things every so often and not every frame anymore. We're still spawning them relatively often and they're still not flying anywhere that we will fix uh, in a moment. But we do have a projectile movement component on this thing. So we'll just set the initial speed. Uh, I forgot to do that. It's something like, I don't know, 100 and then the max speed to... Let's also set that to 100 right now. You probably want to set this through some sort of code. Uh, but once we've done that, you will see uh, these things actually start moving. And 100 is way too low. So let's set this to 1000 instead. And that is much better. So now we've got a character that I can move around. And I can just hold down this button over here. And it will shoot a bullet every 0.2 seconds. And the wonderful thing about this as well is uh, before we were spawning every frame, which is fine, kind of, maybe, not really. Uh, but since we're using a timer that just works on real world seconds, uh, this is now also immediately frame rate independent. Even if my frame rate absolutely tanks to a reasonable degree anyway, uh, I will still be shooting every 0 0.2 seconds. So that's quite nice. Now, real quick, because we're doing this whole bullet thing anyway, I'm going to uh, add in the other three directions uh, as well here. So that's up, down, left, and right. And we're going to be copying uh, the modifiers from the WAS and D because those are the same directions. And you can just copy modifiers and then paste them on here. So I'm going to do that and we're going to skip over all that because that is not too interesting. You can also do it by uh, shift right mouse for copying and then the A key will be the left and shift left click to paste. And real quick back in our code, what we want to do is we want to set our player character to face in the direction that matches our inputs here and only then fire. So... Uh, we're going to split this up into a two separate if statements real quick. We're going to check can fire only after we have uh, already set the rotation. We want to set the rotation always, uh, but we don't always want to fire. So we will uh, use the player character, set actor rotation. And to get that rotation, we're going to make a f vector for direction, which I misspelled, but that doesn't matter right now. And that will be equal to uh, f vector with a value of uh, our input action value dot get, and we will be getting a f vector 2d uh, and adding a zero onto that. Then we can use that direction, and you can actually very easily get a rotator out of a f vector by just putting in your f vector. Uh, dot rotation and that should just simply uh, spit out a f rotator that you can use to set your actor rotation so this will be uh, relatively clunky i will admit because th this needs a lot more polish but this should allow us to add some rudimentary aiming uh, which doesn't seem to be working for our mesh for whatever reason but at least we can actually like aim where we shoot, which, <laughs> that's a start. I'm not entirely sure why the mesh is not getting set to rotate, though. All right, I'm going to be real with you. I don't know why the difference that I programmed in uh, worked, but it's something that we needed to do long term anyway. But now uh, we actually do rotate in the direction that we were shooting in, and we can still shoot in any direction while walking in any direction. Now, I'll give you a real r quick rundown on what I did. Uh, is I took the code for rotating out of the fire bullet. Instead, I'm storing that in a F rotator now. So I made an F rotator variable on the header file. And I'm just setting it to that. And then I created a tick function, which is just something that every actor can have. Runs every frame. You're probably familiar with it. And I'm just setting the actor rotation in that every tick. 
and for some reason that does work. We needed to do this anyway, long term, because what we want to end up doing is whenever we are shooting, we want to orientate ourselves in the direction that we're shooting in, but whenever we're not shooting, we want to look at the direction that we are walking in. So we need to make something for that anyway that runs in the tick function, which we might as well do that right now. So what we'll do is I'll make another F rotator here, and that will be our movement rotation. And in our movement, uh, I will simply set our movement rotation variable to be equal to our input vector dot rotation. And now we just need a bool to check whether or not we are shooting. So the way we're going to do that is going to be a pretty hacky way. And that is we're going to just get this bind action and we're going to copy that over twice. And once we're going to uh, run on started and then once on uh, cancelled, I believe is the one we want. And we'll simply make two functions here. Again, I'm just doing this in a little bit of a hacky way, uh, but it will work. So we'll do a void set shooting true. Ideally, you want these to just run the same function but i honestly don't care too much at the moment so we'll make one for true and one for false and we'll have a bool is shooting and it's as simple as setting it false in this function then copying over this function and making the true version of it it is important to get the capitalization right now and then adding those to these bindings so we have the started will be the true and then when we let go of it it will be set to false and then in our tick it's as simple as if is shooting we do this and else we set it to the movement rotation and that in theory should do the trick i hope and now we can walk around and we can shoot and as long as we're shooting we will be facing the direction that we're shooting when we stop shooting we use the wrong event so i guess we need to use completed and not cancelled i always get these events mixed up they're really poorly named in my opinion i'm gonna just go, go ahead and say that <laughs> uh but now we can walk in any direction and when we start shooting in a direction uh there is one shot that still is fired in the direction that we were walking in that's a little bit of a bug but by and large this is a more or less functioning twin stick shooter now of course at the moment uh, i don't have a controller to test this out with but if you have a controller uh this should work with 360 degree movement rather than just directional movement and a very big thank you to all of my patrons. you can see them on screen right now if you want to help out supporting the channel there's a link down below in the description to the patreon page and a special thanks to my cave digger tier patrons sergey thomas 